Mercury. It is, of course, the closest planet to the Sun, and smallest in the Solar System. Welcome to the Planets of the Solar System series, and today we'll learn everything there is to know about Mercury. Let's start with the physical characteristics of the planet. What do you think of when you first see Mercury? Well, for me, it is our own moon. Both look similar in colour, and are heavily cratered on their surfaces. However, some of Mercury's craters dwarf the moons in size. The biggest crater on Mercury's surface is known as the Caloris Basin. This crater spans 1,550 kilometres across, and was created approximately 4 billion years ago when an asteroid 100 kilometres wide struck Mercury. The impact was so large that it caused lava eruptions and formed an extensive ring of mountains 2 kilometres tall around the site. During a similar time, the planet's inner core cooled into a solid. Because Mercury only has one giant continental plate, the shrinking of the interior caused severe cracking and crumpling, leading to extensive cliff and ridge systems across the planet. Some of these cliffs are hundreds of kilometres long, such as the Great Valley, which stretches for over a thousand kilometres. Another key feature of Mercury's appearance is the white band surrounding the craters on the surface. These are known as crater streaks, and are caused when debris and rock is blasted away from the crater site on impact. The fine dust then falls back to Mercury's surface, and looks brighter than the surrounding rock creating the streaks. The planet itself is only 4,879 kilometres wide, slightly bigger than our moon. Where it differs from the moon is in its mass. Mercury is the second most dense planet in the solar system, behind Earth, at 5.43 grams per centimetre cubed. This mass is mostly attributed to the large metallic core, which is 75% diameter of the planet, or 3,000 kilometres across. This mass causes the planet to have a gravity of 3.7 metres per second squared, which is 40% that of Earth. In fact, when comparing it with the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, it is actually smaller than some of them. Here is Mercury next to Ganymede and Titan, the biggest moons of Jupiter and Saturn respectively. You can see here that the planet is smaller in size, but has more mass and gravity than the two moons. But if you're thinking of visiting Mercury, it wouldn't be a pleasant time. The temperature difference on the planet is the largest in the solar system, at over 600 degrees Celsius. The solar winds from the sun and low gravity on the planet result in a tenuous atmosphere at best. One of the reasons that Earth is the right temperature for life is because the atmosphere absorbs and traps the heat from the sun. Mercury does not have this luxury. As a result, the dark side of the planet can reach lows of minus 180 degrees Celsius, while the day can exceed a scorching 427 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. As mentioned before, the atmosphere on Mercury is extremely thin. It is so thin, in fact, that it isn't even classified as an atmosphere, but an exosphere. This means that the gases that surround the planet are caused only from solar wind and meteorites blasting atoms off the surface. The exosphere created is highly unstable, and the gases are easily able to escape into space. This leaves an almost comet-like tail behind Mercury's orbit, where atoms have been continually lost to the vacuum of space. Even though enormous temperature differences appear on the surface, the messenger probe actually discovered water ice on the planet. It was spotted lurking in the shade of craters at the north and south poles, hidden from the blazing temperature of the day. Though there is water, there isn't much hope for life, as the conditions are too extreme for organisms to adapt to. Now that we have learned some of the surface features of Mercury, let's have a look at its orbit. The planet orbits the Sun every 88 days, and travels through space at 180,000 km per hour, the fastest of any planet. The reason it was named Mercury, after the god of messengers and travellers, was because of its orbital speed around the Sun. At perihelion, or its closest distance to the Sun, the planet is 46 million km away, while at aphelion, or the furthest distance away from the Sun, the planet is 70 million km away. This makes its orbit the most elliptical of any planet. Mercury also has weird days. Each day on Mercury is 59 days on Earth, with meaning that for every two years on Mercury, the planet will have rotated on its axis three times. 
This day-year ratio is quite common for orbits. For example, our moon orbits around our planet once and spins on its axis once in the same amount of time. This is why we only see one face of the moon. Mercury rotates so slowly at one point that the planet is actually orbiting faster than its rotational velocity. When the planet reaches perihelion, its velocity increases. This means that the sun over the planet rises, slows, then stops completely in the sky as the planet's velocity around the sun is greater than its rotational velocity. As the planet moves away from perihelion, the sun will once again move westward as the planet's rotational speed becomes greater once more. From certain views, the planet will even rise, set, and then rise again. When looking from the north pole of Mercury, you can see this transition. The sun seems to pause before continuing on its original path. Finally, let's cover some interesting facts about Mercury. There have only been two probes sent to Mercury, the Mariner 10 in 1974-75 and the Messenger probe from 2011 to 2015. The Mariner 10 did three flybys of Mercury, taking the first pictures we had seen of the planet. It revealed a rocky world with numerous craters and ridges running up and down the surface. While on its journey, it also discovered the planet's magnetic field and mapped 40 to 45% of the planet's surface. The next to visit the planet was the Messenger probe, arriving almost 40 years after the first. It did two flybys of Venus before traveling to the innermost planet. During its voyage, it discovered ice at the poles of the planet and provided visual evidence for past volcanic activity on the surface. One fact that we didn't know about Mercury until the Mariner 10 was sent to the planet was that it has a magnetic field. A planet theoretically should only have a magnetic field if it spins quickly and has a molten core. Although Mercury has a giant metallic core that makes up most of the planet's interior, it must also have a molten outer core, similar to the Earth's, for a magnetic field to exist. Although Mercury's magnetic field is only 1% the strength of Earth's, it interacts heavily with the solar winds to create magnetic tornadoes. Now, these aren't like tornadoes on Earth. These tornadoes funnel hot solar wind plasma down to the surface, blasting apart atoms and forming the thin exosphere on Mercury. Though Mercury looks to be one of the more boring planets at first, it is more interesting than most people realise. Who knew that the planet is shrinking, has a magnetic field and a comet-like tail trailing behind it? I certainly didn't before making this video. Finally, have you ever wanted to see what the Earth looks like from Mercury? Well, this is it. A couple small dots which everyone who has ever lived calls home. That is truly amazing. How small we are from one of the closest planets to us. And that was everything you could ever want to know about the planet Mercury. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something about this mystifying planet. A quick note before I leave, this will be an ongoing series for every planet in the solar system. I will try to release each fortnightly beginning with Venus in two weeks. If you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for the next one. And until next time, goodbye.